Okay. I was just hoping that you could talk about a bit of your early life playing soccer or football. Yeah. Well, I've started playing futsal actually in Brazil when I was six years old. So that's a long, long time ago. Uh, and I played futsal from six until probably 23 years old. I never actually had played outdoor um, football until moving to Australia. Uh, so I've wow. started playing outdoor in 2017. Uh, and yeah, it has been a journey. I feel like it was good. It was hard transferring the skills from futsal to outdoor. I yeah. always thought it was going to be a lot easier, uh, but it's actually pretty hard. <laughs> is there more, like, obviously futsal is a smaller court. Would you say it's more running like on the futsal because there's only like five of you or on the 11 v 11 um, soccer well, field? 11 v 11 is a lot more running. I think the intensity is different. So for futsal, it's always like short, sharp and small. Uh, and yeah. you're always like running. Uh, you don't kind of, you know, just trot along or, or just like decrease the pace. Uh, and especially the way you used to play. So we used to do, so it's two of 20 minutes and uh, the coach used to sub every five minutes, every four people in the court. So oh, wow, okay. you go in for five minutes, like real intense five minutes, and then you're subbed off, rest another five minutes. That's so different. <laughs> it's very different. So it was a bit of a shock to the system. Uh, my body did struggle a little bit, but I feel like with more pre-seasons, more time on the field, and yeah, it kind of slightly got better and better. It's more about like your skills as well uh, on the futsal court. Obviously, yeah. like you don't really have that much room, so you're going to use more like skills to get around the different players. Exactly. And touches on the ball, the way you receive the ball, the way you pass, the way you kick, like everything is so different. So yeah, it definitely took me a while to adapt to the football. <laughs> you didn't want to, I know futsal's uh, like starting to come up like a big thing now. You see some of the futsal world cups. Um, there's more like clubs involved, more money involved in futsal. You didn't want to stay with futsal? Well, I did play futsal because I came to Australia in 2016 and I played futsal the entire year. So it yeah. was the last year that we had the F League, which was the national championship. I played for Galaxy and we were fortunate enough to win that season. So it was amazing. It was oh, a nice. great experience. <laughs> Uh, I did play during uh, the summer league in Sydney. So I yeah. had a guy that used to fly me from the Gold Coast every week into Sydney to play for his <laughs> futsal team, which was an amazing experience, uh, especially that was just new to in town. So like I met so many people. It was just really, really good fun. And how did you first become interested in um, soccer? Were you always a sporty person? Like, how yeah. did you first become interested in futsal? Oh, well, since I was little, I always played. I think it was at PE in school. Like, I had a teacher that he was always like, you know, just play with the boys. And then uh, I started loving it. My dad played football uh, since a young age. So when we were little, we used to go and watch my dad. And I was always like on the side playing. <laughs> so I was one of those girls that from that, I was always playing with the boys, no matter where we were. And the girls were just playing like hide and seek, playing with the dolls. And I was like always dirty playing with the boys. <laughs> so it was just, I don't know if it was from family, but it was just since I'm a kid, I always loved playing football. Like always, it was always kicking a ball. It was always, yeah, chasing the boys and <laughs> playing with them. Did you have any sporting heroes growing up? Um, I mean, I'm from Brazil and I grew up watching Ronaldinho, Ronaldo, Roberto Carlos. So I think, yeah, just watching them play and how amazing they were, it just inspired me. Uh, and then you also have Marta and all this female legend, I must say. So, yeah, just yeah. seeing what she's achieved is just amazing. Always inspire me to play. And for Futsu, I must say, seeing Falcon, I don't know if you heard about him. but he I, have, I have heard about him. <laughs> oh, yeah, he was a great inspiration as well. Just, yeah, love watching him play. Just, yeah, it definitely made my childhood more interesting. And playing professionally now for the Brisbane Roar, did you, when you were younger, did you have any inspiration to play professionally or...? Not really. I mean, in Brazil, I did play professionally futsal for probably eight years. Uh, yeah. But when I moved to Australia, I, you know, I just thought football or futsal was going to be a hobby, you know, just a way to meet people, just to insert myself in the culture. Yeah. I did not expect to go this far. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I took every opportunity that I had and um, I think just training hard and I was like, oh, maybe I might have a chance. So I really kind of train hard for it. But it was one of those things I was okay if I didn't have the opportunity. But then now that I do, like, I'm very grateful and I'm just enjoying it. But yeah, And you've played for the, 
oh, you play for the MPL Lions as well. Um, when you were first um, contracted to the Raw in 2020-21, how did you originally find out? Was it like a phone call or? It was, well, firstly, it's kind of like it's been back and forth because there was a few conversations. Do you want to play? You don't want to play? Uh, because I was at uni and doing internships. Yeah. So I think I could have could have had a possibility probably 2020, but then because of uh, holidays, uni, I was just like, well, maybe it's too much. Because at the end of the day, I'm here because I was studying at the time and then yeah. I'm working here now. So that was always my priority. Uh, but then after that, I was like, oh, okay, maybe I want to, go next year so I really put an effort training uh and then I spoke to my coach both Robs uh and the general manager for Lions and I was like oh can you please like talk to Jake and say like look she's really keen to play do you think like he can give me a chance so yeah one day Jake called me and he was like do you want to go for a coffee and I was like yeah <laughs> of course <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not and, saying no to this opportunity yeah absolutely not so yeah so we were talking and then he was like look we'll be really happy to have you and I was like yes please like uh, the, I've been dreaming with that for the past year so I'm very grateful with the opportunity and thanks to Jake for yeah giving me that chance and you play with so many uh, different types of players at the Raw. Who would you say a player or players in particular have helped you develop the most? Oh, definitely Emily Gionek. I feel like especially my first season and, you know, she's just the best human ever. Like, she's funny. She's a super athlete. Like, she's so dedicated. Like, she trains before and after training. Like, she's always trying to make an extra effort. So just looking at her and just, you know, learning from her, it was pretty special and definitely helped me a lot during my first year. And a couple of new transfers out uh, this season. You might have to help me with the names of the pronunciation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nellie Tatham to the victory and Anna Margraf um, both won't be returning back to the club. How much of an impact is that uh, to you guys? Well, Definitely going to change a lot. Like Anna was being like an all-rounder. Like, you know, she was just playing everywhere and she was performing really well in any position natalie had a big impact as a, as a player and in the group as well so she was a great leader so it was definitely going to be a big loss for us as a team but i think we have good names we definitely going to have a strong team and very competitive so we just yeah with the new signings i'm pretty sure we're going to make up for it and trying to do our best this season and talking about the new signings you got uh, matilda's player katrina gory who's returning to the squad yeah. um how happy are you to have her back into the team? Oh, super stoked. I mean, I love Minnie. She's a great player. She's a great role model, you know, especially bringing Harper back. I think everyone's excited about that. It's just amazing having a little baby around. Now she's a toddler. Like, she's going to be walking. It's going to be completely different. But it's just pretty special. Like, her knowledge and her understanding, is, especially for a young squad, is very important yeah. to have someone like her in the group. And last season, missing out on the finals, uh, just so close yeah. so far away though <laughs> what are the expectations uh going into the new season well we definitely want to make into the finals i think we had a great team um uh, it took a while for us to start scoring but overall i think our football was really good um as a fact that we probably changed 80 90 percent of the squad last year it made it a little bit harder for us just to you know understand what the coach wanted and just playing together but for this year, I think we're retaining probably 60 to 70% of the squad, which makes it a lot easier going to a new season with the same coach. So, yeah, I think we can expect a lot more from us and kind of set a, a few higher goals to achieve. And, yeah, I think it's doable for us to go to final and we're definitely going to be training hard for that. It's always good building on the team chemistry as well. You get used to uh, their style of play. They get used to your style of play and you just mesh as a team uh, all around. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, what does your training schedule look like at the moment? Do you have um, time to fit other things in? Yeah, well, I'm still, well, I'm working full time now, I'll probably drop a little bit during the season. Uh, the good thing, we train early in the morning. Uh, we start at eight o'clock. So some days it's kind of eight until 11, 11 ish. Um, so some other girls work as well. So we try to fit the work commitments in the afternoon. So we have the mornings free. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be busy, but you know, we love it and we keep doing because we love it. <laughs> and you were just talking about your work. What do you do for work? I am an osteopath. So oh, nice. Kind of, 
I don't know if you know, but it's like a mix in between a physio and a chiro sort of thing, just with a little bit of more holistic approach, I must say. <laughs> Were you studying that all the way uh, through uni before as well? Yeah, so I did physiotherapy back home in Brazil while I was playing, and then I moved over here, and I wasn't sure what to do, and then, yeah, I figured out that I could do osteo, so um, that's one way of me of staying, and very expensive way, so thanks, Dad, for that. Thanks for the <laughs> sponsorship. Uh, and then, yeah, so I, I love what I do, and I'm pretty pleased that I can do that and play football as well. Football as well. Football. Yeah, if I heard you, you said you're it's kind of like a physio, is that what you said? Yeah, it's a bit do of you a kind of, oh, Do you kind of help like the team if they have any injuries, like any of the players in the team? Oh, not really. I mean, the, the raw physios are amazing, so I'm just there as a player. I just like if I have an injury, I'm like, oh, I'm sore, treat me. <laughs> so it's just I separate them a lot. Especially You're not like, like, it's this injury, it's this injury. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'm like, oh, well, I just say, I'm kind of, it's easier for me to understand if I have something wrong. And then I think they don't need to explain too much. They just said, you need to do that. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, but even for insurance purposes, like I, I'm realistically not allowed to touch the players because uh, oh, wow. I don't treat, like my insurance doesn't cover professional athletes. So it's yeah. another reason for me just to set, up, set aside and just watch them do their job. Which and I learn a lot as well, so it's always helpful. Are you hoping to move into that after you finish playing football? Will there be like a contract for you to work at the club? Uh, I don't know. I haven't thought about it. Um, yeah. I mean, definitely it would be something that I would love to do, but um, I, actually I, it never crossed my mind. Uh, at the moment, when I stop to play football, I'm probably just going to stop for a little bit and step aside yeah. and kind of just travel and enjoy a little bit. But yeah, definitely something that for the future, maybe. You never know. And throughout futsal, uh, the Lions and, and the Raw, what has been your career highlight? Ooh, um, definitely. Well, I mean, what well, we've been achieving with Lions as a club in Queensland, I think that has been a highlight in regards to just, you know, setting a like a standard and creating a benchmark. Um, I'm very proud to be part of that and to be contributing to that. Um, as a role player, just being in the club for three years now and um, – just, yeah, just playing alongside these amazing players that has been pretty impressive. Uh, and Futsu, I don't know. It was just amazing. Like, I just, the life that I had. Um, we never won nationals in Brazil. Uh, we always won, like, state leagues for years, but we never actually made the finals. So that would be, like, an upset in my career, I must say. <laughs> um, having, like, a Brazilian title uh, for Futsu. Well, I can say that I have an Australian one for our Futsu, which is pretty exciting but yeah I mean that would be a goal winning the double league that would be something that probably every player wants to do so yeah, yeah. that would be the highlight of my career if that has happened but I mean we just keep playing and training hard so we can try to achieve those things. I know beach football is also a big thing did you ever play that or consider playing it? Not really I think I'll probably be, be really bad at it um it's it's amazing I love seeing it but it kind of is harder than what it looks. Um, definitely, like, you know, if I'm at the beach, I'll always have a ball and be playing around and just kind of just, yeah, just joking around. But, yeah, I don't think I would consider that. It's just really hard on the quads. I don't think I'm built for that. <laughs> <laughs> I actually saw a video uh, recently um, from Brazil. I'm not sure what the sport's called, but there's like a, there's like a table tennis or like a ping pong table. Ooh, yeah. And then they do, like, different kicks. Yeah. Uh, it's not like a sport. It's just like a fun thing. So probably Neymar has one in his house, Marta, a lot of the soccer players. It's just like, you know, they're playing on the weekend. It's just for fun. So it's like a table tennis, but it's um, slack inverted like that. So the, the ball can bounce. I always ask um, Rob Scanlon from Lions to buy one of those so we can just play before training. But he's like, there is no space for that. And I was like, please, please. So I always try for him. But yeah, I haven't won that battle. <laughs> but yeah, it's pretty fun. And um, yeah, I believe we created that. But not sure who started that. None at your house in the backyard or in another room? No, I wish. Maybe for the future, definitely. Because it's pretty fun to play that. <laughs> And who's been your uh, role model in terms of, obviously, like, you know, family? You were talking about your um, dad earlier. Has he been your main role model? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my whole life, my parents have been really supportive of me playing sports. So I left when I was 16 home to play interstate and uh, definitely 
my parents were very supportive of that, um, especially my dad and, you know, with the financial side of things, uh, he always helped me out, which was pretty, pretty good. Um, and yeah, so definitely family is always my role model and they always allow me to be here. Um, so yeah, um, I'm very lucky to have the family that I have. Is there any players you desperately want to play with? Like who's like the, like the main person, like if you were like, had anyone to choose from, who would you pick? To play for my team? To play for, yeah. Ooh, there's a lot of good options. I mean, who wouldn't love? I mean, there's a lot of the Brazilians that I would love to play with, like Debinha. Oh, gosh, she is so skillful, so fast. Marta. In Australia, I would say I would love to play that I haven't played. Alana Kennedy, really like her football. Um... Mary Fowler and Sam Kerr. I think they are great players and yeah, I would love to play alongside them, but it'll be a little bit harder. <laughs> <laughs> and what's your next goal you're aiming towards? Do you have any goals in particular? At the moment, I don't. Like, I've been always tossing, like, because I'm almost 30 this year, so I'm kind of, you know, towards that peak that is kind of declining yeah. a little bit. So um, I don't have any interest in going overseas. Uh, I'm happy with the way life works in Australia at the moment, because realistically, I'm already overseas. So <laughs> uh, so just, yeah, continue playing at the highest level in here, trying to perform my best and just, yeah, just help my team. And hopefully this year we can, we can win bigger things as uh, Brisbane Raw. So I'm just hoping we make finals and yeah, we'll be fighting for the title. That's really, that'll be my goal for the year. If you're offered to play in like England with like the women's super league, would that be an automatic yes? I don't think so. Cause I'm, as I said, I'm thinking about my future as yeah. an area, not as a soccer player. So oh. in a position that I am in here with work and, you know, just playing soccer alongside work, I am kind of settled in a sense, which is bad as a, you know, soccer career. But I mean, it's one of those things It's kind of, you know, you've got to, choose the future and i'm more like okay i'm thinking about five years ahead of time so i'm not thinking in the now if it was for now yeah absolutely i'll go without blinking but yeah i want to stay here i want to kind of make life in australia and i think for that i i need to kind of step back and be like okay what's my five-year goal and try yeah. to just go that path it's always great to have a like a life outside of soccer because you never know injuries could happen or um, certain events. Obviously, COVID happened recently that knocked out a lot of like competitions around the world. So it's always good to have that career outside of soccer. Absolutely. And I agree. And a lot of the girls do. And PFA also kind of endorses that a lot in regards to making sure the girls study. They have different pathways because, you know, football is not forever. And we've got to make sure we, we know and understand that. You can make a living out of it. You can, you know, save a little bit, but you always got to be thinking ahead. What am I going to do after football? What's, yeah. Uh, yeah, what's the, the next step? So I'm always getting to the next step. So, yeah, I'm very grateful for people back in the day telling me that. So, yeah, so I'm probably prepared for it. Just one more question. What advice would you give to the younger uh, female footballers, younger generation coming up hoping to play um, football and professionally one day? Yeah. Just keep training hard. Just never take a no for granted. Like, you know, if someone is giving a no, someone will say yes and just listen why they don't want to. Just learn from that and improve and then just keep trying hard. And as I did, just use football as a tool. You know, it can give you university scholarships. It can open you a lot of doors. So just make the most of it. Just make smart decisions. And yeah, football can be more than just football can help you to, you know, get to new places, meet new people, just learn new cultures. So, yeah, just use football as a tool to achieve greater things in life and enjoy. Have fun. Enjoy the process. That's the, most that's, that's the main thing, isn't it? Just have fun and enjoy. That's it. <laughs> Thanks so much for your time um, this morning. Thank you. I'm sorry it took forever for us to... I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a bit of an issue every Friday. Like, it was you, then me, then me, then... <laughs> sorry about that. But I'm happy that we, we got the in interview uh, done and sorted now. Awesome. Me too. I'm glad. Thank you so much.